The Bible talks a lot about peace. The peace that God gives to those who place their trust in Him, as well as the peace between nations or people. Peace is important. Paul said, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. The Bible also extols the virtues of being meek and gentle, not using God's power or God's truth to oppress or put other people down and yourself above them, but to help people. Yet the Bible is also very clear that we should never bow down to the powers of evil. We strive for peace. We're careful to be as gentle with others as we can be. But when confronted by the aggression of evil, we don't cave. We learn that in today's reading. Peter had just confessed that Jesus was the Messiah and you know, you can only imagine the excitement, the enthusiasm that the Twelve Apostles had thinking about the Messiah had come because there had been an emphasis in the, in the tradition that when the Messiah came, he was the one that was going to throw off the yoke of their oppressors and free them from Rome. So what Jesus taught them next was actually kind of unsettling. Like most despotic systems of rule, uh, Rome's power rested in the fear of being punished. And the symbol that generated that fear most powerfully was the crucifixion on a cross that was visible uh, to almost anyone in those days because that's how people who crossed Rome were executed. It was a gruesome death on a cross, shedding blood, losing the ability to hold yourself up so that you could fill your lungs with the air. And it's something that everybody was very familiar with. So when the Bible says, he then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. When the Bible says that, those three terrible words, must be killed, their minds would immediately have gone to those gruesome scenes on the cross. Peter's shocked reaction resulted in a sharp exchange between himself and Jesus. And following that, Jesus gathers not just the 12 apostles, but the crowds. And then he, and then he adds to what he had already said to the apostles. He says, not only must he die, but anyone wanting to follow him had better be prepared to join him in his willingness to die. To follow him is to take up your cross and follow him. How far should we go in our struggle for biblical justice, as depicted in Psalm 72, for example? How far should we go in our acts of mercy to those who are out of favor with our culture or in want or need? How far should we go in humbly following the lead of our master in his clash with spiritual and earthly evil? Jesus told us how far we must go. To stand with Jesus, to follow Jesus, is to accept that the forces of evil that resist Jesus' kingdom may well exact their most horrific vengeance on us. We follow him even to the point of death of our earthly bodies. In this Lenten season, we're tempted to end the story there, but we must also remember that Jesus said not only that he must die, but also that, quote, after three days, rise again. 
evil killed our leader. Evil may kill us if we are faithful to our leader, but evil will neither win against Jesus or Jesus' followers. He will rise again. We will rise again. The battle belongs to the Lord.